Today I thought I'd share with you another set of old frequencies as you seem to enjoy the last lot on Interpol. These are Royal Navy frequencies and it's amazing how much research you can get into just from compiling different frequencies from different sources to build up a picture of a radio system. But first, some backstory. As far back as World War I, the Admiralty had wireless hub stations in major locations around the Commonwealth, such as Gibraltar and Malta, with a central station in London called Whitehall Wireless. In 1911, the Central Admiralty Wireless Station in London was moved to the Admiralty Buildings in Whitehall and this was probably used as the Communications and Receiving Centre for Room 40, the Admiralty Centre for Naval Intelligence including Signals Intelligence during World War I. After the Second World War, the need for global communications began to grow and also the realisation that a network of reliable stations was required. Harbour nets and coastal nets developed early, but the scope of the empire demanded a worldwide system. This need for global communications spawned the Commonwealth Worldwide Radio System. Its location though, well, we'll come back to that at the end. With only a few changes in names or geographic locations, the Commonwealth Worldwide Radio System was actually identical to what was in place in years earlier, and consisted of three distinct but interrelated parts. First, there were the fixed services operating at 60 words per minute on predetermined frequencies. Tape factories were installed at each end of the line for the relay of messages and transoceanic cable provided backup to these plants. Secondly, were the simultaneous broadcasts emanating from each station on predetermined frequencies. From here, Morse code was transmitted at 25 words per minute and copied by hand using typewriters. Messages were serially numbered from 001 at the beginning of each month and rebroadcast three or four times except when traffic got too heavy. A ship kept a complete log of every message, whether they were the intended addressee or not. If a message was missed entirely, a rerun could be requested unless the ship was operating under radio silence. If this was the case, a rerun could be requested from a ship in company using visual signalling, or else the ship could wait until it returned to harbour, where the number one priority would be to complete the log. The third segment was the ship to shore organisation. Under this scheme, ships at sea would call the shore station on the calling frequency as determined from frequency charts. The frequency that was chosen had a dependence on the time of day and geographical position. Any shore station which picked up the transmission would reply and instruct the ship to shift to the associated working frequency. In the 1950 era, the British Commonwealth Communications System consisted of these nine hub stations. They sent their broadcasts by CW and radio teletype. Rat reception was an emerging technology in this era, so few ships had the ability to copy it. We're interested mainly in Whitehall, callsign GYA. This was the UK's primary station, and provided simultaneous keying of several HF frequencies to cover its area of responsibility, as did the Commonwealth or the primary stations. Ships were able to read either a CW or RAT broadcast depending upon their communications setup. These frequencies were operated on from Whitehall's fixed land station and operated multiple modes such as CW and FSK with an 850Hz shift. There's also English language weather broadcast and general traffic frequencies. London was connected to the rest of the world and every transmission started and finished at Whitehall Wireless. This site was in central London at the top of the Mall. From here, all long-haul communications were met by using RAT circuits known as fixed services. Most of these were continuous, with a few part-time on a scheduled basis, as you can see. Whitehall Wireless didn't talk directly to ships. Portishead Radio, a GPO civilian station near Bristol, received messages from ships at sea and sent them by landline to Whitehall Wireless. Whitehall Wireless also ran the messages to ships at sea system, as well as the Fleet CW broadcasts and later the RAT broadcasts. It also ran the submarine broadcasts, keying the remote transmitters at Rugby and Crigion, which were both GPO civilian transmitter stations. Remote naval transmitter and receiver stations many miles from London sent and received Whitehall Wireless traffic around the world. 
Signals from ships deployed around the world were received on CW ship to shore frequencies in places like Malta, Mauritius, Ceylon, Singapore and Hong Kong, plus a whole host of other allied radio stations, and these signals were passed back to Whitehall Wireless over the 100 word per minute RAT fixed service links. If we break down the call signs further, because it wasn't all GYA, you'll see that GYA was the Whitehall Rat Fleet Broadcast, along with GYB. GYC was the Whitehall CW Fleet Broadcast call sign. My research into GYR and GYU didn't turn up any geographical relevance to Whitehall, but the frequencies were locked together. GYR refers to Portland Dockyard Wireless Telegraph Station, and GYU is a call assigned to a wireless telegraphy station in Gibraltar. Whether or not these calls were originally used at Whitehall isn't clear. You'll see that some calls had a number next to them which referred to a specific frequency. A facility that was often referred to as Whitehall Wireless was built in a 12 foot diameter tunnel during World War II and extends under Whitehall from Trafalgar Square to King Charles Street. The project was known as Post Office Scheme 2845. Sites equipped with unusual amounts of GPO or BT telecommunications plant were given a BT site engineering code. This site's code was QWHI, and this is presumably the origin of the site's name, Q Whitehall. Now, it doesn't take an expert to realise that a HF wireless station doesn't particularly work well in tunnels underground. Putting large antennas on the surface defeats the object of hiding the site in the tunnel in the first place. So, where was Whitehall Wireless Station? Well, it's been rumoured for many years that a secret communications facility called Q Whitehall exists under Whitehall. It's claimed to extend as far north as Hoburn. Hard evidence for Q Whitehall though still remains sketchy. A large covered ventilator shaft on Parliament Square is said by some to be connected to the facility. The journalist Duncan Campbell, who managed to get into a network of communications tunnels below London, has reported that he found a closed entrance to Q Whitehall below Trafalgar Square. However, the existence of Q Whitehall doesn't appear to have ever been officially confirmed or denied, and its status remains unclear. So what do you think? 